England against Italy. Um, what a game yeah. this could be. This could have in store for us. Uh, let's start with our opponents. As always, though, Gonzo, Italy. What's your thoughts on the Italians? Uh, magnificent. I think Gio, the um, the best team in the tournament so far. I, actually, to be fair, I think the best two teams have made the final, which is not always the case. Actually, it has to be said. I think um, you know, I, I, but. I'm not saying there are not better squads. You know, I think France have the best squad, but France haven't been good at this at this tournament. He, he mucked it up. They didn't play well. Um, I say he, obviously, Deschamps. Um, Italy are fantastic, have a bit of everything, really. They're, um, I mean, I, I feel like I've discussed them a lot. Uh, I'll, I'll mention he's not playing. I'll mention Spinozola again. I know I have done, not just me, everybody's mentioned him, of course. Wonderful, wonderful player. Really um, stamped his mark on the tournament, and I think plastered his name over world football, really, and made himself. Sometimes these tournaments come around, and um, unless you are at a Manchester United or a Real Madrid, you put yourself in the shop window for the big clubs to buy you. And I think he did that on this. Now, obviously, it can't happen. He's, he's at Roma now, and he's injured. But I think if anybody was going to go and he. He basically became the most coveted fullback in world football uh, during this tournament. I think that'd be fair to say. Um, uh, but they've done tremendously well. I think Mancini's done really well. They're probably the closest thing there is to a, a Premier League team in many respects in in the tournament uh, because of the way they play. He's he's managed to. It's quite funny looking at his tenure at Manchester City. It wasn't just they got rid of him because they wanted to win the Champions League, which obviously they still haven't done yet, although they've become close. There were murmurings from the fans at Man City. They didn't really like the football that much. They found the football a bit defensive and a little bit negative, which I know from an outsider's point of view, particularly when you look at how rampaging players like Yaya Torre and Aguero were and David Silva at the time, you think, hold on, really? But yeah, that was that was certainly the consensus from the fans. Um, he's not going to get that sort of vibe from Italians. Italians are scored in tactical play. They're schooled in defending. They have been brought up on 1-0 wins and keeping it tight. They are the, the, the tactical bedrock of the game, certainly. And um, so they don't mind. So actually, he gets a free pass to play how he wants to. And actually, I think he gets a bit of a bad rap because actually I, I find them on occasion uh, really, really good to watch. Um, but they still have, number one, the, the, the tactical defensive ability and number two the dark arts you know I mean you know the time wasting all that, that oh, it's, it's how Italy has always had that and they still have that in abundance yeah anyway as Gonzo said the two best teams have made the final I quite agree with that but in order to get prepared for the biggest game of the tournament with the two best teams of the tournament you need the best football app and that is the one football app link is in the description and just like watching on Sunday it's completely free keep up to date with the Italian team news the England team using everything you need ahead of Sunday night's games. But also today, earlier today, West Ham played their first friendly against Dundee in the preseason, which means the new season is creeping round the corner. Just a month away now, the Penny League season kicks off. So regardless of who you support, get the one football downloaded, follow your team, keep up to date with all your latest transfer rumours, your friendly results, your friendly performances, everything you need for the Penny League season. It's the best football app for the football fan. Link in the description, pin comments, get it downloaded today. Now, for Italy, I can only echo what you've said, really. They're probably the most impressive team for me because I had a expectation of England and I thought you might go out in round 16 if you faced France or Portugal. You didn't. Um, but with Italy, I don't know enough. I didn't know enough about their players coming into this. While Mancini has an incredible record since he's gone there, hardly conceded goals. I never mind going on beating in 30 odd games. They've hardly conceded any goals in that time. I think you can count them on one hand. Um, I still didn't have high expectations of them. And I know some people said, oh, they're dark horses. I didn't really buy into that because they were the fifth favourites going into the tournament. That doesn't really make them dark horses, in my opinion. That, that's like saying Tottenham are dark horses for the title next season. That's not not really. I think Everton, West Ham, Leicester City perhaps, but not someone like Spurs. Um, so for that, my expectation of them was still low, but match day one came and went. It, they, were, they were the only country that really made me think, wow, okay, that's a statement. Match day two came and went, and they just continued it. Um, they got a bit of a scare against Austria, but I still thought they played well, Italy. I still thought they'd done all right. I thought they were the better team. They were just, if anything, unlucky not to win it in 90 minutes. Similarly with England against Denmark in the semi-final. Again, semi-final, that's the first time, 
I didn't think they were the best team in the game. I thought Spain were better than them, but they won it. That's all that matters at the end of the day. They won it. They got through. And to some extent, it's possibly a good test for Italy to have a game where actually they are second best because you need a little bit of preparation for a tough game. If you keep getting easy fixtures, you don't really learn anything. Um, I say easy fixtures. They put Belgium out in the quarterfinals. So they've had a tough run. But I think in terms of the game and the competitiveness, I think that, that was a Spain were the better side, but they were really good. In the last game before the preview we've done for Denmark game, I said there was a couple of Danish players I never heard of that impressed me at the tournament. And it's the same with Italian. As you mentioned one of them. Another one was Locatelli, the centre midfielder. I've never heard of him until the first game. He was box to box, scored the goal. Oh, who's this guy? And I see yeah. a lot of people's a lot of people that do watch Italian football say that this is their version of Calvin Phillips. Obviously, people in Italy might think, who the hell is Calvin Phillips? But to me, you and most people watching this, we see him every week, we know who Calvin Phillips is. And that is their equivalent, essentially. But yeah, Italy, seriously impressive uh, overall in the tournament. Some really good football. I've enjoyed watching them play as well. And while, like you said, they do have the dark arts, and against Belgium, I thought they were world-class playing football for 70 minutes. Then they were world-class stopping football for 20 minutes but you need that if you're going to go on and win stuff you need to be able to do that and you can call it cheating whatever you want to call it you call it dark, dark arts i'll call it game management whatever you want to call it you need to have that in your locker is this the country you fear the most uh, uh, not just out like the tournament per se but even if you weren't playing them I mean, if you say it was italy playing Denmark in the final, would you say, oh, that Italian team is the one that has impressed me the most this tournament? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I've got, um, oh, uh, firstly, I, I do call it dark arts, but let's, you know, just for, I, I call it also dark arts when Harry Kane does it and when we do it. It's just, yeah, it's, it's not because it's the opposition. I know it's, it's just the way it is. Um, yes, we did our Scarito video at the start. Um, and this was, the, this was my pick. I, I thought Italy were going to win the tournament. So, yeah, it would stand to reason. And actually, since that point, they've only impressed me more. Yeah. Um, I, I knew Barella was a good player. I knew of this player. Well, he's, he's better than I thought he was, you know. Um, would I... Yeah, I mean, you, you, you have to worry about this team. I just think they've got it all. There's, there's a streetwise edge to this team. That, uh, actually, if, if a country like France had not even all of that... And, 20% of that, then um, then they would have done it. I mean, I saw the old man yesterday and, and he said to me, you know, how have France allowed that to happen when they've got a player like Canty in their, in their team? And he's absolutely right because this is, you know, with the correct manager, that wouldn't have been allowed to happen. They would have, they'd be closing stuff out and it'd just be done. They've got enough talent to, um, to hit people on the break. Um, but I think sometimes, you know, ego can sometimes get the better of you. And I think France maybe think they've got to win 5 nil every game. Well, well, Italy are just not constrained by that, and that makes them a very dangerous beast. Italy are more, more than happy, and they always have been, by the way, to keep it at nil-nil and get a penalty in the 85th minute, have less possession, and take the victory. They don't care. They don't care, and that makes them very, very dangerous at all. And I think now, when you look at some of the attacking talent they've got, which gives a real flow to their game, um, then then it's it's trouble for anyone that they play, certainly. Yeah, I completely agree. I think this is the first country that you've played. I think you might be in trouble here a little bit because they've got a lot of strengths. And with everybody you've played so far, you give them respect and say, well, they're strong at that, that and that. However, there's a few weaknesses there that we can exploit. And with Italy, there's possibly one or two weaknesses, but they're not that clearly obvious. And also Italy, Italy can combat those weaknesses. They know how to sort it out kind of thing. All right, our centre-backs are slow. Well, we'll drop 10 yards against you. What are you going to do now? Um, they're the first country you're coming up against. I think actually they've got a lot of things going their way, whether it's their formation, their individual players. But the main difference between this and the semi-final, I think, is the bench. I did say in the preview last game, Denmark's bench just isn't good enough for England. And I, I felt that was evident during the game as well. But I think the Italian's bench is compatible to, to England to some extent. You know, they're going to have Bellotti on the bench. They're probably going to have Locatelli on the bench. If not, if not, it'll be Verratti. 
Ber uh, Berardi will be on the bench. They've got a lot of players on there that can come on and win the game for them. And I think that's a huge difference between you playing Italy and any other team you've come up against so far. But last question on Italy, in Persia Mayor, please. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've said Barella. I, I've been just so impressed with him. Um, I really have. I think he's absolutely brilliant. And um, and I love old Insignia, whatever his name is, on the left. What's a player? What's a player? From game one. Outstanding. And I think brave in many respects to deploy him in that position. I'd suggest that's not his best position, but my word, he plays it really, really well. Um, and, but, of course, we have this of England. Think, well, you know, they, but they don't need to stick him in the middle. They, you know, they've got other things going on. He seems to be able to create absolutely fine um, from there. Um, Donnarumma uh, is, is obviously a very, very capable goalkeeper. And, um, and cheerleaders, um, if, if you heard me speak about Harry Kane the other day, um, if you watch uh, some of our videos, then, you know, you could almost copy and paste a lot of what I said about Harry Kane to this guy here. It's, it's all played up there. Um, just such a wily old fox. He really is a, a fantastic player, a fantastic footballer. These players um, come around very, very, um, very infrequently. You know, now we've had a lot. I'm not saying we had, we, you know, we've had a lot of good central defenders, but he's uh, in, in this country and around. You see a lot, and it's not to say that some of them aren't really good in their own way. But he's a, he's a Tony Adams type defender, and a very, very rare. Uh, he's He's a leader, he's a reader, uh, and he deploys himself and positions himself absolutely perfectly. And um, it's actually a, a rugby a rugby thing. So in rugby, uh, the referees have got, the, um, they can do their own interpretation of the rules to a certain extent. So actually, when you're in the scrum, you've got to adjust to how this particular referee is officiating the scrum. It might be slightly different to the last referee you had. And it's they don't often go and rugby about intelligent players who can very, very much pick up on what the referee, how the referee is officiating. It's less prevalent in football because they have to follow more uh, of tier to stricter guidelines referees. Almost everyone referees the same, but we know in football there's actually some nuances. Some referees are better than others. Some referees are more lenient. This guy picks up on exactly straight away. It's almost like he can mind read the referee and, right, okay, this is what I'll get away with him. This is what I won't. And I, I think it just, it, it deploys it absolutely fantastically. Um, I think Verratti is a very, very good player as well. Uh, I, I do think if there's one thing they're lacking, and we've said what they've got in a lot in abundance, is they are lacking a world-class striker. And um, that's... Somebody said the other day, somebody say, oh, which players would get into the... Uh, I was asking Italian, which players would get into the Italian team for the England team? Um, and it was a little bit of mind games, a little bit of kidology. Uh, and the, but the first thing they said, and they said one player, I said only one player gets into the Italian team, and that's Harry Kane. A little bit of chronology and, and you know a little bit of naughtiness. I understand, but it was actually true um, that Harry Kane would, and they do lack uh, some of the players of, of that they've hold that they that they've had in years gone by. A world class striker, they don't have one. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe he's not world class, but I think Immobile is definitely an elite striker. I think he's a top top tier striker. And there's only a handful of strikers better than him in the world. I will agree though. Kane is one of them, along with the likes of the Kaku, but I think Immobile is definitely up there, and he's, he, I think he completes Insignia well as too, because he sort of pushes on and gives space in behind where Insignia likes to drift into as well, so I think they comp complement each other massively. I think Jorginho has been superb this tournament. He had a really good season with Chelsea, winning the Champions League as well, and he's coming to this one. He looks like the, possibly the best defensive midfielder in the world at the minute. He really is just Unbelievable. I've seen some people suggest he might win Ballon d'Or. I don't think he's been that good, but I certainly think he's been world class in that midfield for Italy as well. Um, but they've just got talent all over the pitch. You know, Chiesa came in a couple of games ago, perhaps fortunate because I thought Berardi was playing well. He keeps his place. You know, again, I thought he's man and match against Spain by an absolute country mile. Every time Italy went forward, they got the ball to him. And there's a lot of big players for it. I guess it's a bit like England as well. There's a bit, lot of big players for it. And when you go forward, it's sort of like, do you keep the ball and back yourself? I think it's easier for Cristiano Ronaldo to do for Portugal, for example. If he decides to shoot from 25 yards, he's almost justified by saying, well, no offence, lads, but I'm better than the rest of you. But yeah. when it's Italians, they're all sort of on the same level. I don't think anyone's that much better than the rest of them. 
but he's got that sort of selfish streak in him, which to some extent impresses me because if someone's makes a run and he's open, he says, no, I'm not going to use you. I'm going to go myself. And I think for such a young lad as well, fair play to him as well. Anyway, lots of talk about Italy, lots of quality in the Italian team, but there's also lots of quality in the English team. The guns of Mr. Gary Southgate has not named the same starting line in two games in a row for three years. Is he about to do it for the first time? Give us your prediction rather than what you want to see. Do you think Southgate's going to remain unchanged? Yes, I do, yeah. Do you know, no temptation to switch to a back three, do you think, just to keep it safe I, first? I think, I think what you said is... I think what you said is, is quite important, actually, because... There is an uplift that you get from that. There is there is an uplift in performance you get just from the familiarity of players playing consecutive games. That's that's why people do it. Um, there's an advantage to it. And, and listen, it might be 1%, it might be 5%. But the players spent a little bit more time, not just in each other's company, but they're just used to the runs they make. You know, and obviously the longer that can go on, the better. The fact that he's not done it for a long time, uh, this may well be the time to do it. And I think he may well be thinking of that and just say actually this could because whatever one to five percent increase in performance is going to be enough to make a difference in this game there's no doubt about it these are two teams that are deservedly in the final with with lots of quality players so i i have a feeling i have a feeling you'll stick with exactly the same i think so as well i think it allows if, if things aren't going right or whatever, you can drop Saka into right wing back and then switch formation anyway with the players on the pitch having to make a sub. I think also the way that the one advantage Southgate has got over Mancini today, you know how Italy's going to line up. Italy will line up 4 3 3. Mancini might think Southgate will line up 4 2 3 1, but there will be an element of him, just like every person looking ahead to this game, whether you're an England fan or not, you might think. He should go 4 2 3 1. He'll probably go 4 2 3 1. But he also might not. There is a chance Southgate will switch to 3 at the back. And therefore, Southgate only has to plan for one Italian formation. But Mancini almost has to plan for two, possibly even three different England setups. And I think it, that's 1 0 Southgate before the ball's even kicked, if anything. Just showing against Germany, just that one game, he switched to 3 at the back in the tournament. What it did show was. I will switch if I have to, I will switch if I want to, and it works. And it just means that Mancini can no longer just assume England are playing 4 3 one However, in agreement with yourself, I think that's what he would do. And is that the team you would like to see? Uh, I think so. I think so, yeah. I mean, I might be tempted to swap Sancho in um, uh, for Saka, quite possibly. But um, for, for a very simple tactical reason, which I'll go into in a minute. Um, because I do think this game, there's going to be some really, really great individual battles here. Um, Phillips and Rice are going to be involved in a real competition in the middle. They've got to get the better of their opposite numbers. Uh, Mount is going to have to drop in and get involved in that as well. And that's going to be a really interesting contest. Rice and Phillips need to have the games of their lives. If, if they play the best to them, if, if Rice plays, you know what like we've watched, right? If Rice plays man in a match like he does at West Ham. Phillips plays man a match as well. Uh, England win this game. Okay, because if, if that's the case, then Italy don't get a sniff in central midfield. If Italy don't but get what, a happens, sniff, what happens if Jorginho, Barella, and Verratti all play man a match, though, as well, well as Racing? Well, I, 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 I still think we shut them down because our speciality, I think, negates theirs. But I think we've got to be, this is where I think the competition and the contest is, is there. And we've got to be really careful because, in terms of mobility they're going to move the ball around us really really well so actually those interceptions have got to be precise the tackles have got to be good and they're going to need an awful lot of help in there so i think it's contested in that area is one of the ways the other area um is is i think what you saw sterling doing towards the end um they're going to try and not leave any space behind them the italian defenders uh so Actually, what you're going to need to do is travel with the ball slowly and stand your defender up, get him to commit, then try and beat him and force him into a tackle. Now, the longer that goes on, ideally what you want to do is get to position. So, um, do you know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about 30 yards spacing behind the run into. Actually, you know, face them up, face them up and then try and flick it and trick it and go past them. Hence the reason Sancho quite possibly 
for there. I want Sterling to do exactly what he was doing in the previous game as well and driving into that box. And then later, what I also want is, I couldn't believe Denmark were doing it. When Grealish came on, there was a couple of times he got it up on the left and he wasn't actually trying any tricks. He was just edging his way into the box and they allowed him into the box. Okay, so that's actually going to be an area where I think a goal could come from and it may well be a penalty, by the way. Because I think they're so wide, he actually got to get them to commit to a tackle. Uh, I also think they're going to be canny and wily enough to show us wide. And if you're doing that, then what you want to do is stand them up and then try and get some direct running into the box so you can draw a foul. And I think us wide in those areas, be it uh, whatever, Sterling, Grealish, Saka, a real area that's going to be um, really interesting and, and at central midfield as well. Yeah, I think you should play the same team, but Mount's got the biggest role out of the England team here, I think. Um, for the reason you said, off the ball, he's got to get back and help Phillips in, Rice, because you will be outnumbered in the middle of the park, because Insigne also comes quite central as well. He doesn't play in the touchline. He cuts in. He wants to go up against the centre-back, not the full-back kind of thing. Yeah. And I think you're going to lose the battle in the middle. I disagree with you. If Rice and Phillips play man match win the game, I disagree with that. I think the Italians are possibly better in the middle of the park than what they are. And that's not looking down on Rice and Phillips. They both had a fantastic they're both fantastic players and brilliant partnership. But you're outnumbered unless Mount gets in there every single time. And you just can't do it. Mason Mount just can't do it. He's got if you look at the statistics from the Denmark game, you see the, the heat maps if you like. Mount's one is a very unusual shape. He's not really got a position. He's here, he's there, he's everywhere. And it's a very difficult role to do. And he's possibly the only English player that can do that role that he's given, which is you need to support the attack. But out of possession, you get back and help. And we've seen similar traits apply to West Ham players that when we put Pablo Finales in that position, we expect him to cover all the pitch. And I think you will lose the battle in the middle. I think the Italians are too good in there. However, I think the space for England or the way you will win the game if you win the game is down the sides I think Emerson and De Lorenzo are there to be got at they're not quite well we, there's a reason when we've been speaking about Italians and the players we admire neither of us have mentioned the left back or right back that's going to be on the pitch on Sunday because they're probably their weak spots Emerson's doesn't, he's not even second choice left back but Chelsea's their third choice left back and he's decent enough would I have him at West Ham absolutely but this is a Euro 20 final, not who I want to see line up against Burnley at Turf Moor on Tuesday night. And I think whether it's Saka or Sancho or Kyle Walker overlapping, Emerson's there to be got at for England, just as De Lorenzo is on their side of pitch. That guy's a walking yellow card. And the one thing I saw with Grealish, which Denmark did, which I thought was stupid, was when they took Waz on and got him booked after about 30 seconds against Grealish, he continued to man Mark Grealish. Whenever Grealish cut and he ran after him. And I thought, what are you doing? There's now a massive space for Luke Shaw out there. And if Italy employs similar tactics, should it be Sterling or such like, the Lennon's is going to be cutting inside and leaving that gap down there. And you're asking some really attacking-minded players to come back and chase Luke Shaw and Kyle Walker, who are not slow. And I think that would be a big ask for them. I think you'll, like so, to summarise it, I think you'll lose the battle in the middle. But I really do think you'll win it out wide. I think that's where you'll get your space. That's where you'll create your chances coming down the sides. But also, I think there might be some space in behind the Italian defence, even if they do drop quite deep. We saw Kane's playmaking in the semi final. He's, he's arguably your best creator out of the starting 11. He's possibly your best person at through balls, so on and so forth. And for that reason, you need runners. You need Sterling. You need Saka that's going to run in behind Emerson, De Lorenzo. Most of your players are going to be faster than the Italian centre-backs, regardless of who they are. You're probably going to be faster. Um, but then you could say that about Harry Maguire as well, couldn't you? So it's going to be a really interesting battle. I don't think there's too much between them. Um, so let's talk about that. Then. Well, first of all, how are you feeling? An Englishman looking forward to England in the Euro 20 final? The nerves kicking in yet? Nah, nah, um, no, no. No, I think they, they will on the day. I wish it wasn't at 8 o'clock on a Sunday night. Um it was wrong. Um, I know it is, but, you know, I don't know. It's, but but I'm never, I'm never, I'm never cont we're never contesting the thing. So what would I what would I know? It, it, uh, but I think maybe on a day, I will. I, I wish it was, I wish it was middle of Saturday. I do. Um, anyway, there, there you go. That, that's that. Nervous? Not yet. Not yet, mate. But I am really, I'm really, really, look, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm loving the, I'm loving what's been coming out of the respective camps and, um, this is this is all part of the build up and the, the the press and what the players are saying. I'm I'm 
quite into that at the moment, actually. That's really, that's given me more confidence, actually. Yeah, the main games are underway. Truly, and he's yeah. saying that's no surprise. England got to the final six out of seven games are at home, kind of thing. The main games are well and truly underway. It's like you said about them earlier. I, see, I remember in the semi final, just before the penalty shootout against Spain, they did the toy cost to see what end to play at. Didn't toy cost. I was like, right, we're playing at that end. Jordi Alba, uh, Spanish captain, was almost like trembling with fear in there. Chilini was laughing, picked him up and gave him a big cuddle and put him down again and walked away all happy as Larry. And I thought, Spain have almost lost this semi missed this shit before they even start. Yeah. Spain's almost lost it. The captain is a back of nerves here. Chilini's already started with England, so just brushing off them in the final. Well, yeah, that's because they're playing been playing home games, you know. So what? Um, everyone knows it doesn't work like that. <laughs> everyone knows that it's got some advantages, but it's also got disadvantages. You've got to go down two goals down to Italy. It could work in Italy's favour. Uh, saying that, the whole, there's not that many home fans on Sundays. There, I know there's sixty thousand people. I think there's only no. Nah, I think there's only ten thousand officially to the England fans. What we call it, members club or whatever. I think there's ten thousand tickets and ten thousand to Italians. The others are all sponsors and so on. So, of course, there will probably end up being 30,000 England fans in there. They will, they through the contacts and so on and so forth. Um, but anyway, you, you the thing is you, you've got Club Wembley there as well. You've got to remember why and how that stadium was funded. So you've got Club Wembley in there. So you've got another 10,000 who are just basically automatic have a, have a ticket for everything and anything that happens at Wembley. In essence, they own a bit of Wembley, don't they? So it's like a bond. Um so yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not too, I'm not too worried about that. Anyway, yes, go on. What you saying, sorry? You confident? Yeah, yeah. Are you? They, yeah, they, yeah, I, I, I am. Explain they, yourself, they, boy. Um, okay. Uh, too much, too, too much from Italy, actually. Um, but too much from everybody. Uh, I mean, they've, I mean, I'm not sure if Gareth's going to use it, but uh, too much, too much digging out England now. I mean, basically everybody having a pop at England, everyone hates England and so on and so forth. And um, I think there's so much there that there's now a team talk there, which is basically and always works. Fergie did it for years. Everyone hates us. Um, so I think that's really good. I think that goes in our favour. I think um, the Wembley definitely goes in our favour as well. Uh, to hear um, Verratti and to hear uh, not um, Jorginho. I think, oh boy, you boys are talking about Sterling's penalty too much, far too much, uh, particularly bearing in mind how Italy how Italy played. Um, they were angry. I thought, oh, this is good. This is good. They were angry that, that Denmark went out to that penalty. But well, why do you care so much? I, I, and I, I, I don't, I, I disbelieved it. it was all about Christian Eriksen and the rest of it. They were annoyed that England were in the final. They were annoyed that that penalty, which most of us thought wasn't a penalty, was given. Oh, actually, you care a little bit too much here. And I like it. And there's so much focus. And the more I hear them speak and so much comment invested in England from what they're saying, um, I, I, I really like it. And I like the way Southgate's not getting involved in it at all, which I, I hope in within the privacy of the dressing room, I mean, he will use what's been said as a team talk. But certainly outwardly, he's um, Mr. Nice Guy approach is... Um, it's one thing Chiellini saying that, um, uh, but people actually know where it's coming from. Uh, Southgate's not getting drawn on any of it, and he won't get drawn on any of it. Um, and it's not so much how England are portrayed to the rest of the world, because you definitely, you know, people are, people hate it. People hate football's coming home. People hate I think it's arrogant and, and all the rest of it. Um and, and, and people are offended, and, and it seemed like the Italians were offended by England being there. I thought, well, this is really good, actually. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I just, I think we're, I won't be, I think we're focused. I think England are really, really focused, and um, and I'm, I'm liking what I'm hearing from everybody else. And I think those things, I do think the teams are evenly matched. I think actually, when it comes down to it, home advantage is going to count for something there. Um, and I think this actually may well come down to who's calmest. Now, I can only hope that England aren't so calm that we start slowly. So I think we've got to start quickly. Um, and I do. I, I think I think we've... I, I don't know. It, just, it, it, feels, it feels like we've got a really, really good chance here. And I am not... I do not... It's here a good team, the, the best team. Um, but I think we can beat them. I, I'm struggling to call this one, to be honest with you. I, I don't think there's much between you, whether it is mind games, whether it's ability, whether it's game management... 
I don't think there's much there. Um, like I said, I think Italians have been possibly the most impressive team, but England have done what they've had to do without too much. Plus, I just think Italians are a step above any opposition you've played so far. And I hate when you say that, because it's almost like you only won because their team was crap. And I'm not trying to say that. What I'm trying to say, I, I've just, I've yet to be that convinced by some of England's performances yet. Against Denmark, I thought, well, you were the better side and stuff. Schmeichel had to make, what, one top save and one maybe decent save, and that's it kind of thing. I just feel like you haven't really, te- you didn't really test Denmark to convince me that you've got like the pedigree, if you like. But what I was impressed by from England, I hadn't seen an all tournament until the semi final, was what I would call the game management. The way that in towards the end of extra time, you passed the ball about for three minutes straight. Every player had a touch of the ball, you're just passing, passing, passing. Denmark couldn't get it. I thought that is what you've just done there. See that game out. Every time a player ran forward, there was a chance to cut in for goal. Actually, they turned around and said, well, Let's go to the corner, turn around and give it back, and we'll go again, kind of thing. I thought that's composure, that's calmness, that's a game plan because you're all doing the exact same thing. Not one player's gone a little bit off the cuff, cut in and trying to get the, the third goal and go for glory kind of thing. And the team spirit of this England team is something I've never witnessed before. And Jamie Carragher summed it up well. Jamie Carragher said when he played for England, everybody saw Liverpool players and Man United players. And there was that d- division mm-hmm. in the camp. There was Liverpool players. There was England. There was Chelsea, you know, Lampard and Terry on one side, Rio and Rooney on the other. Then you had Gerard and Carragher on the other. And there was divisions in the England side. Their egos were too big. There was too much celebrities in the England camp, you know, probably led by David Beckham, Mr. Celebrity of them all. And I'm not doubting his footballing ability. The guy is one of the best football players I've ever seen live. But I do think that England squad was fractured. Whereas this one, you don't see a Liverpool player in an England kit. You see an England player in an England kit that just happens to play for Liverpool, just happens to play for Arsenal. And I think, to some extent, I think it's maybe helped having a few non-top six players in there, whether it is Declamise, yeah. Callum Phillips, Jack Grealish, Jordan Pickford, Tyrone Mings. There's plenty of them. And I think that even Jude Bellingham and Jaden Sancho, I know they're a massive club in Dortmund, but they're not at one of the big clubs in no. England. I think it's helped a lot, actually, not having a squad that's half the Man United team in there. I think that's helped the togetherness of that team. And I think that might actually possibly see you win the game, to be honest with you. Like I said, I don't think there's much between you. But with that in mind, kind of push you. I think I know what you're going to go for, but I don't know what I'm going for at the minute. So I'm hoping you're going to speak for a minute and <laughs> give me a bit of time. No, I've got a couple of things to say. Yeah. What's your score, uh, final words and your score prediction, please? Uh, a final, final words is, I, I think, um, while... I've, I guess I've been a little bit taken aback by the, by the dislike of England, I think, in, in that sense. And people eager to take offence at a song and stuff like that. Um, what has really pleased me is, though, I think there's been a real unifying spirit about this. I think it's unified the country, actually. And I think it being on terrestrial television ha- has helped massively. There are people that I know who aren't into football who are watching this who just wouldn't be watching if it was on BT or on Sky. They're watching it on ITV on it's on BBC. They're keeping the kids up late. Uh, they, you know, people don't even have an interest in football keeping their kids up late to watch it. Everyone's invested in it. Um, I think I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm going to say it. I, I because we don't normally talk about race or anything like that much. And I think it's been absolutely unifying. Uh, I've got to say, I think it's been there's been all this stuff going on for months and months and months for equality and all the rest of it. And you know what? Look at it. It is take a, a football match, and you look at the fans. There's black, white, pink, purple, <laughs> every colour, and they're all together, and they're all behind England. And I, I just actually think from, I just feel like it's unified everybody, and just everybody feels together. And it's come at the right time, and it's come at a time when the country really, really needs it. Um, so despite the, the cynicism from outside the country, I think it's been remarkably. Um, good for us and I feel a real togetherness at the moment um, a real almost like a, a rebirth of of, um, of modern Englishness if you like I, I really do and I think it's really healthy and I think it's really good I'm very proud um, to be to witness it to be associated with it be a part of it whatever um, so I think that's that's really really good in terms of the game I don't think England have peaked yet I think Italy peaked during the group stage and I think we're getting better I'm not saying they're crap I'm not saying that all right but I think we still have a gear or two to go I'm not sure they do and I think if we can get that then we win 
And so I'm actually going, my score prediction is going to be uh, England 2, Italy 1. In, in 90 minutes, or are you going for the extra time? I want accuracy. I, I, think, I, think it could go to, I think it could go to extra time, actually. Yeah, could be a late night, uh, kiddies. So, um, you know, if, if uh, phone up, phone up the headmaster. Actually, don't, don't phone up the headmaster, because I don't want to be phone up the headmaster, but contact the school. You might not be going into school until until 10 o'clock. Actually, I shouldn't be saying that, should I? I'm not I, I'm not encouraging anyone to play truant. I'm just saying it could be a late night, kiddie winkles. You know what I mean? <laughs> It, I advise any kids to have a massive cough all Sunday, so they've just got to stay off precautionary. They've got to stay home on Monday. And it turns out they're fine and they can go back yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you know, just get get ready, Kathy. Um, I think it'll go to extra. I don't think it'll be finished in ninety minutes. But I think you can even see this one going to penalties. To be honest with you. I think in, uh, I think Italy will be okay with it going to pens. I think Donnarumma is superb at penalties as well, and I think they'll trust their goalkeeper they'll back their goalkeeper a little bit and say if this goes the distance we've got the best goalie here kind of thing we're, we're ready for this they obviously put um spain out in pens who put um switzerland out on pens or yeah was well, switzerland spain put switzerland out of pens and italy put spain out on pens and um, so they've got the experience there kind of thing and i think they'd back themselves but for this one i think i'll go one one in nine minutes, I think Italy will win it. I don't know how, whether it's pens or extra time, I'm not sure how. But I just think, I agree with what you're saying. I think England have got another gear to go. I don't think you'll find it. And I think, I think he's got everything spot on so far, but I think it's because of the manager. I think he's not got the handbrake on per se, but he takes the handbrake off, but keeps the... Keeps his foot on the brake a little bit. Do you know what I mean? I know. He, just, he, takes he, off, he, he, quite go. he won't press the accelerator. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he gets on the motorway, but doesn't quite go 70 mile an hour. He still stays at 65 just in case. Yeah. And I think that is where your downfall is going to be. And I think if you've got a goal down against Italy, we're not long to go. I think you're going to be in trouble a little bit because I think they will do what we call the dark arts here. I think you will see the biggest time-wasting job you've ever seen in your life. It will frustrate you. And I think that is when... You said about England players need to remain calm. I think they will. I'm I'm almost not sure the fans will. I think if the fans were to witness it, I think Wembley would kick off a little bit, a little and lose composure. But I, I'll say Italy win, but not in normal time, and it'll be a narrow win. Anyway, and uh, there you go, uh, England fans. Best luck to you. Hope you enjoy Sunday and yourself, guns. I hope you enjoy the game on Sunday. Good luck to you. And um, we'll have a review of some form on Sunday evening. I don't know if guns will be sober, but. Um, <laughs> We'll have a review of some sort on Sunday. Um, if you enjoyed this period, drop a like on it. Subscribe if you're new around here. Make sure you download the OneFootball app. And we'll catch you in a bit.